dun 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 Welcome to another Getting Projects Done with me, Chris. Today we're working on Tau Flyers from Aeronautica Imperialis Skies of Fire. Last week we worked on the Imperial side of things, uh, finished off the Lightnings and the Vendetta, Valkyrie, one of the two, one of the two. And this week I'm working on the Tau. Uh, the box set comes with three barracudas and two tiger tiger sharks, shark tigers, catfish. Anywho, yeah. So I had already filmed. Well, here let's have a, let's have a peek here where we're at. I already filmed, and patrons already have access to this little guy. And this is one of the uh, barracudas, and it's a lot of fun. Really simple, straightforward. I painted it in a color shift. Now, it doesn't quite show up here under the light because I have multiple lights uh, illuminating the area here. But you can see it kind of goes from like a purplish. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera here, but it goes from a purplish to a reddish. You can see that shift in color. And that is the color shift. Now, the color shift paint is uh, from Turbo Dork. Uh, it was, what is it? What the heck was this? Lunar Eclipse from Turbo Dork. So it goes from that reddish tone to a purpley tone. And under your like your normal house lights, like when I pull this out and look at it, um, you know, under just like one lamp, yeah, you can see the color shifting. It, it's, it's really quite cool. So anywho, that was the Barracuda. So I got these two other ones to work on today. We're gonna try and get those finished up. And if we have time, we will work on a Tiger Shark. This one is not finished uh, assembly yet uh, crap I still even have to do the engines and everything it's really quite a uh, quite impressive uh, like how many parts but how quickly actually this thing went together this is the tiger shark patrons uh, have not seen this one yet so you guys are even getting a peek even before the patrons do well by the time this goes up on YouTube the patrons will already have access to this one but yeah so taga taga shock Right there, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed this one. I, had, I actually had a bit of uh, troubles figuring out like where I wanted to go with color. And even now I'm looking at it and I'm still kind of like, uh, maybe sh maybe should this be black? Maybe this should be copper or, you know? I don't know. But anyway, this one is a color shift as well. I posted a picture of this on Instagram and um, yeah, to just to showcase uh, the the uh, the color shifting. This goes from like almost like a turquoisey color. You can kind of see there. It's kind of a turquoise, and then it goes to a really nice blue. Uh, what color was this? This was uh, this was ice to never. This might actually be my new favorite color shifting paint from Turbo Dork. See, it's got this really uh, get that highlight of light out of there. It's got that really nice blue to it, and then it shifts over to almost a purple. I don't really see the purple tones, or do I? Um, no, I don't really see the purple tones. More blue comes back to me than the purple. I guess, yeah. Maybe just the way I'm looking at viewing the angle of it. But, yeah, it, it shifts colors, and it, it's really apparent, on, especially on the size of this model, because the model's pretty darn big. If anybody's curious as to how big these Aeronautica models are, if they're not familiar, here's a here's an, an Eldar and this model. It's pretty big. I mean, I like you know anybody familiar with the old Epic scale? Like these are pretty darn big. These are bigger than Epic was. And yeah. Now, do they fit right in with Titanicus? I couldn't tell you. I've not done a side by side as I do not have any Titanicus models on hand so I could not tell you but anywho that's that's the plan for today is to get these two guys done and then uh, finish assembling uh, this one if we can if if we have time I don't know do I really need this pane of glass uh, there's a bit of that light glare coming in can we move this light we can move that, right? Yeah, we're good. 
Yeah, we're fine. Go Starman Deluxe. Hey, yo, just got back from a seven-hour D&D session. Oof. That's a, that's a session. I don't know if I've ever gone seven hours. About four or five. Not seven. That's a long one. That's a long day. That's a long day. All right. So let's get our paints and brushes in order. No, this is not like a usual ritual for me getting my crap and all my ducks in a row here, so to speak. Um, now, let's get started here. What do I want to do? Anybody who's wondering here, it's just simple um, green painter's tape. And I just mask off the stems and the stands uh, just so I have something to hold on to while I'm airbrushing. So, yeah, that's the only reason for that. I'm sure a bunch of you already figured that one out. Alrighty. Or anybody who watched the video, I guess. <laughs> now then, I am going to get to some quick dry brushing. Now, normally with color shifts, I don't usually like to um, mess with the effect too much. Maybe just a very subtle edging. With these models, I mean, you know, because of the size and everything like that, I don't know if I really feel like going around edging all these little panels. So what I'm going to do is just a quick little dry brush. Very, very light, very, very minimal. I'm going to use some Demonette Hide uh, because it's more, because when I look, when I look at these models, they have more of a purplish tinge. Right now under these lights, they ha actually have more of a reddish tinge, but that's just the nature of the lights because like there's like three light sources going on here. And um, yeah, so just a quick little dry brushing, just to catch some of the edges, bring out some of the panels, stuff like that. Just bring a little bit of, um, you know, depth, as it were. Go Starman Deluxe, had to get up at 6.30 this morning. Uh, at the moment, I usually don't get up in the AM. <laughs> Just grab a little bit of the color, wipe off a majority of it, should be good. And then basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my brush strokes backwards just in case I have uh, too much paint on the brush. Then it kind of looks like a bit of a streaking going on, you know, kind of, uh, you know, making lemonade kind of situation just in case if I make a boo-boo. And I'm concentrating more of my brush stroke on the forward end of the uh, plane. Just a little bit. And I just want to catch just some of the high points. It's really, really subtle. It is not a big, you can kind of see there, where it gets kind of dark, you can see some of the edges are caught. And that's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking to change or introduce too big a highlight on that surface. That's all I'm looking to do just to bring a little bit of depth. And do another quick dry brush on the underside. Just a little bit. I also love too that the little um, guns rotate on these models. <laughs> That's fun. So when you're making your pew pew sounds, you know you can you can do it kind of accurately. <laughs> All right. do, 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 do. So obviously when I dry brush, I make sure I pull a lot of the color out of the bristles. And yeah. And like I said, it's a very, very minimal dry brush. Like we're not looking to change too many values. We're just looking to just, just catch edges. That's all we're looking for. 
just because we don't want to damage that nice little color shifting property of the paint. So you can see it's like right there near like the, the cockpit. You can see it's just a very subtle little highlight on the edges. And that's it. Up on the panel lines. Like that's all we're look, really looking to do is just catch some of those panel lines. Just bring a little bit of definition into the, the model. Just, you know, for visual um, interest. But normally, with color shift paints, though, I don't. I don't dry brush like or hi uh, highlight the color too too often just because I often like an undisturbed uh, finish of the paint on the model giving me all that color shifting goodness and that's it just a quick little dry brush just catching just the, the absolute surf like tips of the surface. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Again, like I said, it's 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 meant to be very, very subtle. That's all we're looking for. Dragon Knight. Hi, all. Hi, Dragon Knight. Alright, let's wash off a brush. Oh, here's a <laughs> it's something that ha periodically uh, occurs to me uh, whenever I end up, you know, making this error. I don't know if it's error, but it's just whenever it ends up happening to me. If you ever want to get out of your habit of licking your brush, and licking brushes is kind of a miniature painter, um, a miniature painter's kind of habit. And a good way, because I, because even I sometimes lick my brushes. Well, a lot of times. I mean, you know, it happens. It's habit. It's a habit. It's a bad habit. I, I don't recommend it. It's unnecessary, but it's a habit that persists. And anyway, a good way of getting out of it is <laughs> because I was airbrushing these colors, and I was working uh, with uh, a sealant that I use all the time and what was the other color I was using? What was I doing? Oh right yeah because I was using um, different oil paints and uh, I dump my mineral spirits into my rinsing water and I had like my well here I have a little bit of alcohol in here for washing brushes and you know when I'm using other colors and yeah I dumped it into my water and I actually can smell it on my brush too so it's actually a good way because if you've ever um you know <laughs> tasted mineral spirits yeah it's it's kind of nasty it's nasty so every time you lick your brush you get a taste of that and it's like oh good god is it poisonous yeah probably <laughs> in very large amounts i would assume or maybe even the small amounts i have no idea I haven't dropped dead yet, and I've done this. I've done this to myself many times, of putting mineral spirits in my water, not on purpose, like so that I would stop licking my brushes. But um, when I'm, you know, doing small things, and I've got just a little bit of mineral spirits, and I'm talking like just, you know, a milli a milliliter of mineral spirits, and then, you know, just dumping it into my rinse water here. There we go. Pretty as a picture. I'll wipe the soap off my hand. So yeah, if you're interested in getting out and, and wanting to break the habit of licking your brushes, yeah, just put a little bit of mineral spirits in, in your water. I'm talking like a milliliter. Tiny, tiny amount. <laughs> I don't know, is mineral spirits poisonous? I imagine it is, right? I'd imagine. But I mean, alcohol is poisonous too. And I mean, like, you know, iso alcohol, we use that all the time. But I mean, people drink alcohol all the time, right? So it's, it depends upon, you know, the ratio of parts per million, as it were. But I don't advise drinking it. And like I said, you can, you can just taste it in the brush and it's like, oh, bleh, you know? 
Go Starman Deluxe. So basically, stop yourself from licking your brush by killing yourself. Can't lick the brush if you're dead. Right? <laughs> That's exactly right, bud. That's exactly right. All right. Um, do I really feel like using this? I used this last time. Ah, screw it. We'll keep keep consistency. I'll use this. Oh, did I roll over my cord? I think I did. Son of a beehive. I picked up a new paint shaker. This thing, um, as far as I can tell, has already paid for itself. <laughs> Not really, but um, yeah, see, like you see how a lot of scale color is really, really medium y, medium -y? but this is a, a really light paint. Make sure this is all good and shook. I've been meaning to pick one of these up for ages. I've even talked about it like on Discord and you know just you know just whining and complaining and you know just real first world problem type of stuff, right? And um, finally decided, screw it, bought one. And this one appealed to me because, well, it's got a nice big base to it. It's like a big, you know, uh, footprint to it. And a higher RPM. I have no idea if that's any if it, that's any better, but went for it anyway. And the vibration feels tingly. I probably don't need to leave it on that long because I was just playing with this the other day, so it really shouldn't be that heavy, heavily settled. Yeah, when I put it up to the light, I can see like right through the bottle. Yeah, you can see the paint right there, the little level of paint. Yeah, it's good and shook. There's no sediment on the base. Dragon Knight, beside. GW green stuff which model putty easier to clean up doing asterisks uh, that have a few gaps well if you're just doing gaps um, like and if the gaps are really really small like ha just hairline cracks um, you can use like you can use liquid green stuff the GW liquid green stuff I'm not a big fan of it because it shrinks when it dries, and so you put that on a gap, and then it recesses when it dries. So it's it, it filled that gap, but you gotta put like a few layers down to get a nice smooth, even space. And then cleaning it, like if you wanna make it nice and flush, sometimes when you're cleaning it, like it doesn't sand or blade very well, and it ends up pulling at other parts, and it just, it's, it's, it's kind of a pain. Uh, I prefer for hairline gaps uh vallejo's model putty uh do i have any sitting around here it's way over there i'm not gonna get it um it is basically a marble dust um combination with acrylic binder i believe i believe it's mar marble dust it's, it says like on the ingredients it's just simply a marble dust and it fills gaps really well and doesn't shrink and in fact uh, in the right, well, when you just take it and use it right out of the bottle, you can actually almost kind of sculpt with it a bit. So if you even need to come up details or create like a, a quick little like level or plateau or whatever, you can do that pretty easily. And it's a fun way of kind of like, you know, you know, introducing yourself to sculpting as it were. Uh, but as far as uh, two-part epoxy, neatite, which is what uh, the, the blue yellow stuff, I'm pretty sure that's what you're talking about, right? That's the green stuff you're talking about? Yeah, that's that's a company Needite. They make that, and that's just basically a two-part epoxy putty. There are many manufacturers. Some are gray white, some are blue white, and some are green yellow. And the only reason for that is so that you can tell when the putty is thoroughly mixed. Um, 
Now, as far as easier to clean up, Neatite, a two-part epoxy putty, is pretty um, pretty annoying to clean up because even um, even when you're you're mixing it in your hand, uh, if your fingers are dry, it'll adhere right into your fingerprints. Like you'll see it just digging right in, and and it's like it's great stuff. And it's very versatile, and you can use it in all sorts of instances, not just modeling, but also, you know, home repairs and automobile repairs, and you know what I mean? Like, it, the stuff gets used all over the place. And um, as far as cleaning it up, I'm just trying to think. I usually, like, what I usually do when I'm using it for modeling is I will have, like, a little container of water nearby, and uh, I, on my palette or whatever, I'll put, like, a little bit of water down, and I'll just rest my putty there when it's between whatever I'm working, like if I'm taking off chunks of it, like after it's been mixed, of course, because that's when it gets really tacky. And yeah, um, but as far as cleaning it up, I'm not sure exactly, like, like you mean like if it's stuck in your carpet or if it's on your clothes? Because it's kind of in there, I think. I actually am not sure because I've never really run into instance where I've wanted to clean it up. I've always just kind of worked like before even messing with the stuff I've looked at proper well not proper but best uh, best practices for working with the stuff if that's the stuff you're talking about I don't know if you're talking about li like GW's liquid green stuff or you're talking about two part epoxy which GW sells but there are many manufacturers of it so I might need a little bit more info on that one exactly what are what are you looking for go star man deluxe hee <laughs> hee May have just made a clip. <laughs> Knob. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're going to use some Scale 75 Speedo Metal. Or Sped. Is it Sped? It's Sped Metal. I thought it was Speedo. <laughs> that D looked like an O to me. I thought it was Speedo. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know who's sp Speedos are made of metal, but... Anywho. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Ignore me. <laughs> Just gonna slap a little bit onto my palette. Grab a brush to work with. Yep. Grab a model. Now, because this paint is really qu uh, quite thin, uh, we are gonna have to apply it in multiple coats. But that's fine because this is a two-hour show, and uh, we got plenty of time to sit, chat, and uh, get our projects done. I'm kind of curious though, are any of you working on projects when I'm working on projects? Go start my deluxe. I guess in that case you could say your red speedo is very wet. What? What? I'm afraid, I'm not sure what that means. Very careful here as I push this metal closer to the finish. One of the challenging things when working on you know models is obviously when you've brought up one area, you know, like the main paint job itself, up to a finished type standard, and then you start adding in new details, and you gotta always be very, very careful as you maneuver your way around. <clears throat> but I do like these models. These are fun. Um, I'm a big fan of flyers to begin with in 40k. I mean, I have a whole bunch of flyers for my Eldar army. 
and I would I'm waiting for when Games Workshop produces Eldar for Aeronautica because I will a hundred percent snap those up when they come out like snap like a full-on neck snap <laughs> Jeez. more like whiplash maybe but Because this paint is um, really quite thin bodied, um, it almost flows on its own. I bet you I could add flow improver to this or flow aid and get this to flow like a, a, a contrast paint, a metallic contrast paint. <laughs> Doesn't really cover that great though, over an opaque color. You can see how you can see quite a bit of under color showing through. In the light, obviously, it's like very. It, obviously is quite bright but yeah uh, anyway I'll give that a moment to dry put that over there I gotta keep my other model in front of me so I can see what exactly I did right because here's our mostly finished now I've, I've said it in the videos that you know, obviously we're gonna go further down the road as far as you know what else we do on it but for now, that's it. The fun one is getting these little intake grills or whatever the hell these things are. I say intake grills, but it could be exhaust for all I know. I don't think it really matters. And I don't think anybody who sculpted these is like, yeah, those are the intake valves because this is the way the tower engine really works. I doubt that was a conversation that was had. Oop. Bumped an area. Not a huge concern. But yeah, I did bump an area. Oops. I bumped two areas. Don't, dang it. I'm working on these I am not painting these to you know anything higher than tabletop standard maybe a good tabletop standard but nothing more than you know just getting them table ready and that's all we're doing but I do want them to be fairly neat as I work my way across them Go cool, Starman Deluxe, you're doing some work on your little Grotabama conversion. Cool. Uh, you're going to send pics, right, dude? Because I want to see that. <clears throat> I want to see a Grotabama conversion. Then we'll do a little symbol next. I need a little bit more light, I think. Pretty as a picture. We'll do the, the nose next before we get off to the other fun areas. Love doing those little rings around the drones.
pretty sure though on the underside I didn't go quite as far in. I just did the nose like that. I think I just made up how far back this went. So I'll do the same thing here. Just like so. Just like that. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Greenleaf train, get naked. Okay. Dragon Knight. When it dries on the models, and I uh, I no need I no need file than sandpaper, but hard get file to tight joints. I right, doing Astria super heavy tank. What's Astrius? I don't know what that is. So you're talking about regular green, uh, like two-part epoxy, green stuff, right? That's what we're talking about. When it dries on the mall and I no need, and I no need file, then sandpaper, but hard get in tight joints. Uh, get yourself some sculpting tools um, to help push uh, the putty into areas like that. That's one of the big ones. Um, in a pinch, you can mostly just use like a uh, um, your hobby knife or whatever. But yeah, if you're gonna play more with um, with epoxy, two-part epoxy, yeah, you're most likely gonna want to start picking up um, some um, sculpting tools not 100% necessary because you can just like make it a tool right like you can just simply take a piece of sprue and shape it with your hobby knife and you know whatever you need whatever you, suits your needs right to make whatever shape to fill to fit a gap these are all just possibilities um but yeah, also too, when sanding green stuff or two-part epoxy, um, really, really fine grit sandpaper. Don't use very coarse sandpaper because it'll leave gigantic grooves in the surface, whereas a fine grit, you know, you um, you can take down that surface very nicely and it'll be even smooth and, you know. But a lot of times you can alleviate a lot of that um, by making the green stuff very smooth when you apply it the first time and then, and then leave it for you know uh, 24 hours to set up uh, If you really want to speed that process up you can uh, put a UV lamp uh, on it Or you can just leave it in, uh, on your windowsill let the sunlight go on it that speeds up the uh, the, the curing process is uh, UV light so um, You can do that as well Uh, but as far as, yeah. And as far as, yeah, sanding in, in the tight joints, uh, you might want to look at, um, um, you might want to look at a site like Micromark. They sell very fine tools and they'll have little sanders and stuff like that that can get into little fine nook crannies. Uh, companies like Tamiya have been producing tools like that for ages. That's another one you might want to look at. My favorite though is Micromark. They they've just got a great collection of of uh, tools, fine precision for various professions. And it's not like they're just hobbyists or um like you know train hobbyists or you know whatever. They they's into they's into all sorts of stuff. color along the surface and trying to stay out of the grooves trying to anyway trying not 100% successful 
but I'm trying. There we go. One more, and then we can work on the underside. Oh, and then I gotta put another layer down because <laughs> some areas are not quite strong yet. Um, Ghost Diamond Deluxe, hoping to finish building today. We'll send pics before painting. The Astraeus is a super heavy marine graph tank. Oh, not familiar with it. Oh, is that that big Primaris crazy ass thing? That great big thing with the cannons and yeah, it's the anti-grav thing. Oh, okay, I think I know which one that is. Yeah, yeah. Take it. All right. Let's put another layer on that. So some of you may recall that my brush strokes were like going this way before. So this time I'm going this way. Or was it that way? It was this way, wasn't it? It's kind of hilarious that this paint is flowing so thin that it's it's almost like a, a contrast paint in that regard. Like it's just very, very thin. Have you noticed the entire time that I've been painting and like you know working with my color and rinsing my brush? That I have not licked my brush? <laughs> have you noticed? Probably haven't even noticed. I just realized that myself after I just cleaned the brush. So many people have it in their head too that like you have to do it. Oh you you gotta do it. No, you don't. <laughs> my my entire time painting in oils, did I ever lick my brush when I was painting? <laughs> so licking your brush is not integral to being a miniature painter. It is a habit that people picked up and you know, they equate it to, oh, it's good miniature painting. Eh, not really. <laughs> Unnecessary. Liking the paint scheme. Would be pretty cool to see you replicate it on a 40K scale model. Uh, this one here is a bit 
closer, not really, because I mean, it didn't color shift before. I didn't have color shift. This was like 20 years ago I, when I was collecting Tau. And uh, it was this deep purple with the silver and black. It was, it was this kind of color scheme. It's really actually kind of, here under the light, it's actually kind of hard to see the black. But there's black. It's on the wingtips. It's up near the missiles on the uh, wings. Uh, the cockpit has a bit of black. Anyway. Yeah. catch that part last time. Didn't get this little ledge here, right here. Mm. And we'll do those little rim. Oh, wait, we didn't do these parts here. I didn't. So there's a little bit of color here that wasn't strong enough. There we go. Pretty as a picture. But yeah, doing this as um, a 40K paint scheme, this, the color shifting, I'm sure would look really fantastic. Because that, like I said, that's what I used for the the, um, the main body. And doing that on a towel vehicle would be pretty cool. Do I have any towel vehicles? I actually had a really fun idea. I was actually going to probably do, uh, not right now, but actually probably not for, not for a little bit because projects are building up. But... Um, yeah, I wanted to do like play with some uh, of these like turbo door colors, and you know create some fun color schemes for various factions. Tau, Eldar, you know immediately jump out at me for using color shiftings and just bright metallics, because uh, turbo door has like a wide array of of colored metallics, and yeah, just be really fun. Here's well, I gotta fix this model, but hey, here's a model I did for turbo dork. That's uh, other than the loincloth, it's all turbo dork. The sword, the armor, the head. Yeah. I could not tell you what I did for all that, but that's all turbo dork. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was all by hand, or maybe the body was airbrush. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember now. Any. Um, yeah. What was I looking for? I was looking for something. Looking for something. Found something you did. Oh, it's just more speed metal. That's what I need. <laughs> Actually, let's let's vibrate a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody's probably like, "What the hell is he doing?" Freaking weirdo. <laughs> now, I want to get the lighting a little bit better here. Maybe if I put this more this way. Let's try it like that. Is that better? Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, it's a little better. Alright. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to go one more coat on these. Oops. 
got some bright silver. I'm just going to quickly touch up some of the little areas of uh, the, around the drone, wing drones or whatever the hell these are. One of the dangers as well as working with this paint in, in a thinned out fashion is that you can end up hitting some of the little recesses in the paint wall. Yeah, just like that, fall right into the recess. I'm not too worried about it because you know, we're going to do a step that's, um, you know, not going to be too much of a problem for that kind of thing. So we're not worried about falling into recesses or anything like that. Just looking to build up a nice solid base coat. Solid. Solid. Let's get these intakes a little better. Complete that curvature. Yeah, this light's pretty good for the moment. Yeah, it's actually pretty handy. I got this light like right next to my eyeball. So you can see, even as we're working along, I mean, like, because of the nature of the silver I'm using, like, we have to put down a few layers, especially on these big broad areas. Yeah. It's not, like, I don't think this color was really designed as a base coating type of paint. This was more, like, for just doing that fine edge, which is why it's probably very thin body, because, it's like, this color next to, like, uh, which is, what, thrash metal and... I can't remember what the other metal is. They're th they feel thicker in comparison to this. This flows very, very thin. So I think this was more or less intended as the highlighting color and not, you know, obviously a base coating color, right? Anywho, Ghost Starman Deluxe. If only the shakers were a little cheaper, then you could have one for painting and one for the bedroom. <laughs> That's, that is a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all making me out to be some sort of sex maniac, I think. <laughs> some sort of uh, sexual deviant. <laughs> Which I assure you, I am not. <laughs> a little bit weird. But a deviant? Hardly. Maybe a pervert. Most likely. What was the question? I'm just doing these little missile bays. Deedly, 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 deedly. My camera? Yeah, I'm the camera. Yeah, there's like little missile bays here. So I like to pick these out. I'm just getting the color right in there. Actually, let's do this top ridge. Pretty sure that's what I did on the other one. There's a little ridge right here. It's like a frame. Catch that. There we go. Yeah, see? When it covers like tiny little edges, one shot covers it really easy, but when you try and do a base coat, you can see there's a little bit of dark patchiness, and that really is there. I mean, when you shine a light on it, it's obvious it disappears, but yeah, in lower light situations it doesn't look quite as uniform. So, yeah. Anyway.
Boom. Pretty as a picture. I'm not sure why I always do that in a groundskeeper Willie voice, but whatever. cannons for bursting old man Logan hey there Chris what have we here seeing the color shift as you move them all around is nice yeah can you see it? I haven't been really paying attention I mean like obviously when I'm looking at it but I have like a whole bunch of lights where I'm working here so I, it's you know the effect kind of gets lost but under one kind of light like in your room or something like that um the color really does become apparent and it's really really fun I like color shifts they're a fun way to you know spice up a model spice up I'm not really sure models need spicing but I think you get what I'm talking about <laughs> I like these little flyers though. I, this the reason why I wanted this box is because of these towel flyers and these things are just really darn cool. Uh, I did my tiger shark and I kind of wanted I was I was almost tempted to strip these guys and do them in the color I used for the tiger shark. I was uh, I was that in love with that color that I was ready to strip these guys and start over on them. I know, madness, right? But, it's just really darn fun. And for Freaky Deaky Xenos factions, you know, it's a great excuse to really bust out fun colors like this. So, any of you out there who collect, you know, any of the Xenos factions, Eldar, hell, even Tyranids, you know? Tyranids is a great excuse to use color shifts. Like how many insects have that sh color shifting quality to them, right? How many? So many. All of them? Much better. Let's do these undersides here. Man, I barely covered this one. Well, unless my finger hit it. Here, that's what happened. My fingy. My fingy or. My fingy or. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, maybe we'll do one more layer on that. Maybe. Meh. Grim, very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Grim. Thank you. All right. We'll let that one settle for the moment. Because I think that one is pretty much where we want it. So let's start on the other one. And then just a quick reminder for everybody. Yeah, so here's the Tiger Shark. I had a lot of fun painting this one. Uh, I don't know if it shows up on camera here, but it's, it's more of a turquoise on the body. Um, but then it shifts into a purple, like when you get a little bit further out, it's hard to see, but anyway, yeah, that's a tiger shark. It's a lot of fun, this one. 
I think really, like I was talking earlier, like I wanted to do maybe a little bit more black elements on the upper surface, but I think that'll change when I throw uh, decals on it and pick out some points. I think also maybe I'll do a little bit of highlighting on the copper because there's really not any highlighting or anything. There's some shading, but there's not any highlighting. Again, I'm just going for a quick tabletop for these guys, and maybe as time goes on, I'll come back and, you know, weather them, you know, demonstrate, you know, the transfers and, you know, stuff like that. I don't think we'll do any battle damage or anything like that, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. Let's start on this other guy. This one here is actually equipped differently. I put the um, the burst cannon in the nose, and then he has these other little, they're not burst cannons, that, they look more like the uh, pulse rifles, but I can't remember what the hell they're supposed to be. But I made this guy kind of a like close support type of plane, whereas these other ones, most he's got still got like his rail gun in the front, he's got the burst cannons. Uh, according to the rules, this is more of a medium to long range, whereas this guy is kind of the medium to close range. I don't know. I just kind of slap parts on. <laughs> I really wasn't that concerned with what, you know, worked well or anything like that. I just, ah, it looks cool. Sounds cool. Whatever. Comments, questions, time we had here. Holy cremolies, we're already an hour in. Cheese Louise. Cheese Louise. See, even shaking the paint, still a habit. Humming to myself. Not not so good. <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. No, sir. Can't say I like it. <laughs> I'm not sure why I bust into the um, commercial, serial commercials. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp.
Old Man Logan. Chris, any experience or thoughts on a mirrorless camera? Um, I mean, mirrorless seems to be the way uh, cameras are being made these days. Um, some argue that mirrorless is better than mirrored uh, in regards to, um, obviously, the sensor size. But I think the sensor size just get bigger because the technology becomes more available. And, you know what I mean? Like... So, if you want to go mirrorless, by all means, go to mirrorless. Um, gives you a more compact body. Uh, but, I don't know. Something about, you know, holding a camera. You know, like, like, I'm used to a Canon, and it feels like a camera. And I have, like, a video camera. This is my video camera I use. And this is shaped like a, like a DSLR. But it's a video camera. But, well, I guess you guys can't really see it. But, you know, and it's it's got some good weight to it. But I don't... This has got to be a mirrorless, right? It's a video camera, right? So, you know. And I could use that to take pictures. I just don't. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I do the things I do. But as otherwise, um, you know. You want to go mirrorless? Go mirrorless. You know? It's kind of like when um, digital was becoming more prevalent. And, you know, people were making the switch to from film to digital. You know, I mean, mirrorless seems to be the way the technology is moving. So, go ahead, pick one up. It's, you know, not hurting anything, right? Unless it starts biting people, which it most certainly will. Go start my looks. Get someone else to hum for you. <laughs> Get like a um, like a band down here. That's what I need. I need a band down here. I wish I had the room for something as goofy as that down here in this space. <laughs> I say down here in this space because I'm in my basement. Old man Logan Grim asked if it is email time. He he he. Did he ask? I didn't see him ask. Oh, I didn't see it. Old man, you do have giant Fifi full fun paws though, so a DSLR probably feels about right for you. True. Yeah, because I mean like. Uh, well, so do you. What are you talking about? You're the same size as me. I think you're bigger than me. Like, height-wise, not girth. Whoa. And, um, yeah, that could be it, too. Um, 
that it just feels more comfortable. But, but then again, I mean, like, <clears throat> I've been taking photos, well, since, like, since the early 90s, since high school, photos and developing film and you know what I mean and then when I went to college uh, you know did it again and you know film and and you know developing the film and everything like that and I would love to build myself a dark room and go back to film uh, one of the things that I would love to do and I would love to either make myself this camera or find one for you know a reasonable price uh, is um, you can look this up if you're not familiar with it uh, tin type tin type and uh, I'd like to get into that because there's something very I don't know what it is what, like something just very satisfying about it there's no color it's black and white it, it's a really really old timey type of technique but the great thing is is that the photograph cannot be duplicated and so what you capture it's, a, it's truly, truly a moment that will never happen again. It's an instant. It's, it's, it's like when an artist paints a painting and they paint it and that's the only time that that piece is ever going to exist is in that form. And when it's lost, it's gone, you know? And that kind of photography, I like that aspect as well because photography is everywhere. And, you know... That the tin type is just very exciting to me. It's different. Um, I'm not sure I'd get on put on a, po a watch list if I picked up all the chemicals for developing the pictures, but <laughs> yeah, I might. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> might be on a watch list right now anyway, but not for the reasons you think. Ghost Army Lux, I don't know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, but don't you dare try to stop me. Is that a quote? <laughs> Are you quoting yourself, Starman? Is that what's going on there? Starman is just letting us know that uh, he can't be contained. He shan't be contained. He's a rebel. <laughs> rebel without a cause. Or clue. One of the two. <laughs> Don't worry, ghost. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Old man. No, he didn't. Just trying to get Grim in trouble. Oh. LOL, yeah, but I think your hands are bigger. Yes. I have hand envy. <laughs> And envy. Envy. Yeah, so photography, man. And we were talking, old man, about, uh, you know, doing photography. That's kind of, like, without getting into it all last night, that's what I was talking about, is is that. And, like, I, you can build your own camera if I can just find, you know, uh, especially, like, you know, an old lens like that, because I'm pretty sure it's a... I think it was a 50 or 80 mil. It was a 70 mil. Anyway, it's one of them old type of lenses. And, you know, it's, it's just something that, you know, is interesting to me. And there's a few artists out there who are doing this stuff. Um, but, yeah, I would, I, I'd really like, I'd really like to, to do that. Of course, that means I'd have to lug around this big freaking honking camera, but that's okay. That's okay. Go Starman looks Quite possibly no clue and no cause. <laughs> and how? Uh, 
Uh, where am I? Burst cannon. Let's do the burst cannon. decision is how far this gun went back in, as far as being silver. I don't need the entire gun to be silver. Just the barrels. The barrels. intakes I'm thinking I'm a thinking I'm a thinking Hit a spot. Put another layer on the nose. Because who knows? Who knows? Only the nose knows. What's next? Oh, the drones. <laughs> <coughs> Old Man Logan, is the silver also a color shift? No. The silver is sped metal from scale color. Scale 75. That's the silver I'm using. It's a really, really bright silver. It's almost like their white alchemy. Their white alchemy actually is like obviously whiter than this. But you can see the white in the white alchemy. <laughs> I know. Some of you are going, really? Duh. But, yeah. I know. Hard to believe.
There we go. <laughs> this one. We'll do a layer on the underside and then move on to the next phase. frame here. Just making sure everybody can see what I'm doing. Because just like everything out there, it's all about me. <laughs> me. Deblet. Oh, Deblet. That's a name I haven't read in a long time. Deblet. If it isn't, hey you, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, doing my thing, man. Painting minis. Talking. Trying not to put my foot in my mouth <laughs> you know the usual on the little guns, the guns. I can't remember what the hell these guns are called. Some sort of tau pulse blaster thing, ma bobber, you know, something like that. Let's, yeah, let's just come right in. You know what? Let's leave that little plate right here. Let's leave that the base color. Just for giggles. It's moving on me, so I'm going to have to hold this here to keep it still. Yeah. Let's get fancy. Let's get fancy. Get some fancy pants. Oh, 
dang it. There we go. There we go. All right, we gotta do the top again. <laughs> there we go. So we left it silver, and then just left that little casing underneath the base color. Just for giggles sake. Like, why not? Let's just, let's have some fun here. Let's have some fun. Because if we're not having fun at this, then what's the freaking point, right? What is the point? I need some more speedo metal. Some sped metal. Let's keep the gun right over here. I'm not entirely sure why I'm kind of concerned about touching the model a lot because I've already varnished it a bunch of times. So, if it's not protected now. What's the point? Just trying to get into all them little nooks and crannies for crannying and nooking. <laughs> nooks and crannies. not entirely sure where I'm going with this but anyway and that should be good for the guns I'm not too concerned about them it's really just anywhere where I have like kind of the flat areas of metal I want to make sure that I you know, get fairly decent even coverage on. Uh, what did I do last time? I went up and down, didn't I? So let's go left and right. Just like that. And just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oop, hit another area. Oh, well. <laughs> Not too worried about it. I almost licked my brush. It's been a while since I licked my brush and I haven't even licked my brush in a bit. <laughs> Again, it's a bad, bad habit. And in case you missed it earlier, if you want to get yourself out of your habit of licking your brushes, just put a little, like a milliliter, tiniest of milliliters of mineral spirits in your water, mix it in your rinse water. Yeah, you won't lick your brush again. A couple times after tasting mineral spirits yeah you, you you'll be like oh my god no no thank you good god no good gravy You know what? I'm mostly okay with that. Yeah, we're okay with that. Let's move on. Uh, where are we here? Deblet. Dave knows you're painting town models. Noddles? <laughs> I'm painting town noddles. Um, I have no idea. Um, I don't work for me Wargaming anymore, so, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my copy's cool. Ah! Because it's been sitting for an hour and a half and I haven't touched it. Ah! 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 Alright. Next phase. 
we'll let that dry a little bit. We'll go back to this guy here. This was the first one we were working on. We are going to, well, it should be pretty easy to tell them apart, right? Because I was just doing the little burst cannon there on the nose. And he's got a, oop, he's got a rail gun on the nose. So I can tell them apart. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Is it necessary to use my paint shaker on shade wash? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys probably can't see me, but... <laughs> it is totally not necessary. I think what it does, too, is because it vibrates so hard, <laughs> um, it throws in lots of bu bubbles. I was... Um, what was I doing? I think it was my Agrax Earthshade. And I had used it on the uh, on the paint shaker, and it had like a layer of froth. It looked like root beer. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Anyway, uh, Ghost Starman Deluxe bets on whether Chris licks his brush by the end of the stream. Oh, I'll end up licking my brush, of course. But anyway, yeah, so uh, shade wash, non oil, gloss. That's what we're going to use. Uh, and we're big, we're gonna just hit the entirety of the model, uh, not so hard that we let it pool up and change the values of uh, of the um, color shifting paint. But yeah, so we're just gonna really it's more for the silver's benefit than anything. That's really what we're concerned with. But we just simply pick a point and yeah, let's just go here and just start slamming this on. Now this is non oil gloss, so this will finish nice and glossy, obviously. And um, it won't disturb our um, our underpainting, our um, our base coating. Um, frick, you know damn well what I'm talking about here. The color shifting paint, for God's sakes. I must be getting old and see now. <laughs> Old and senile is what I must be getting. <laughs> yeah, we'll hit that too. Get into the vents nice and deep like. Of course, it's more for the grills as well. And again, like I said, it's hitting the entirety of the model. Because we want a little bit of that black to fall within the panel lines. That's really what we're looking for. somewhat generous amount that we're using but not so much that it's going to pool up we just want it to fall within panel lines just like so tint a bit of the uh, intakes here but I don't want it you know getting too crazy Here's a picture. We're going over the entirety of the model, but again, I concentrate guns and you know little doodads panel lines I say it's pretty just a fast kind of way of getting these getting these guys done it's just 
lay down a base coat, give it a shade wash, and you know, get back into it, right? Nothing terribly complex. We're not, you know, we're not doing a bunch of highlighting or shading. Just looking to get this done. That's it. That's all. Did I get the top of that? No, I didn't. Gotta get the top. There we go. I think that's good. Alright. No pooling. Nope, looks okay. Okay. Green Leaf Terrain, Chris. What is it like being an old fogey? A fogey? Foggy? Is it foggy or fogey? Old Man Logan, ouch. <laughs> um, what's it like? I don't know. It's like every other day, except my joints freaking hurt. Oh, Christ, I forgot it. The freaking coffee was freaking cold. Oh, damn. Damn. Alright, let's move on to the other guy. Stay open. Stay open. You don't piss off. Anger me up. Anger me up. Alright, let's grab a fairly generous amount here onto the brush. And let's just start going to town. Boom. But even though we've grabbed like a huge amount, we're not letting it, you know, settle too heavily anywhere. That is looking okay. Get that burst cannon. Okay. Grab a heavy amount here. Generous amount. Keep working our way around. Oh, that's too much. 
too much. I want to believe that that's a little too much on that wing there, but that's okay. Let's move on. All right. Ghostar Metal Deluxe. Better question is, is there such a thing as a young fogey? I don't know. <laughs> is that when you have like a young person who acts like an old person? Is that a young fogey? Old Man Logan, sadly I know what it is like all too well. In fact, yesterday I put on both my underwear and shorts on backwards two different times. Good God. Green leaf terrain. My joints are all smoked. <laughs> har, har, har. Har, har, har. All right. I think we should just let those dry for a bit. No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Talk to myself, you kids. Ignore me. Ignore the man. Ignore the crazy person. I'm going to grab my, my dryer. I'm going to run this for a few moments. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. It's kind of hilarious. Even after the gloss, the non-oil gloss, it even looks even more glossy. <laughs> that was spun in that wing there got away on me you can see on the lower part a little heavy there oh well Next, we're going to bust into some regular... Actually, you know, you know what? No, let's, let's switch it up. Let's use Black Templar. And you know what? We'll use the shaker for this. We're going to use uh, the, the Black Templar to pick out some of the panels and to, yeah, I'm going to do the intakes. And in fact, I think I'm going to do the intakes on the first model I finished. Because I did black in those intakes and you can see, really see like the, 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 the grills on the intake. And it's fine, I suppose, but I think I want it darker. Just so that there's not so much brightness on the model. I don't know, it's, you know, it's always a balancing act uh, of uh, 
You know what? I'll try it on this model first. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll just do it like a fade on the top part. Just go for it a little bit of kind of fake depth. Or I'll just do the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, screw it. I'll just do the entire thing. See, I like that a little bit better. See, that's pure black now. A little bit of shine comes back, but I think that's the glossiness, and that's fine. Yeah, I like this a little bit better, just a little darker on the intakes. Just a little bit. Yeah, I prefer that. A little darker on the intakes. Yeah, that looks a lot better. It balances a little bit better with all that silver. I feels anyway. Alright. I'm going to keep this guy in front of me though, because so I can tell where I need to put color. I'm going to do the guy who's pretty much the same. Grab a little bit. And let's just start off with the Kuka Pit. Now, believe it or not, contrast sits on top of this glossy surface just fine. But you have to treat it kind of like um, like the um, the shade washes. It will, through the surface tension, just kind of go wherever it wants to go. It'll hit the re uh, hit the recesses, and then just phew, disappear on you. It'll move all over the place, moving into all sorts of areas. Just doing its thing <laughs> and if you're okay with that well then by all means carry on but if you want to keep it in a more controlled fashion yeah you need to be mindful of where it's going what areas it's hitting stuff like that probably tell by the way I'm laying this down I am leaving it pretty heavy on the surface that's because I want to go for maximum color depth uh, what's the next thing oh those little engine blocks and the wing tips the wing tips did I do the inside of the tails oh, I did not okay cool what was I doing? Oh, right, the engine blocks. Or what I would assume are engine blocks. But of course, I am assuming. Oh, right, and then the uh, intakes are the exhaust. These are pretty fast. You just simply cover them up. about it. Let's do nozzles. There we go. Uh, what was I 
was the other? Oh, the wingtips, right. Yeah, I think that's it, right? Yeah. And you know what? In that regards, the contrast does more what I prefer, which is leaving that little bit of edging along some of the details, which gives it the impression of, of highlight. And I'm fine with that, especially on this tiny-ass little scale of, of a model, right? So now... They're looking pretty darn close to each other. Sweet. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for consistency, especially when you're batch painting these things, right? Oh, excuse me. Do, 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 do. Any questions? No? no? No questions. Time we had here. Holy caramelies! we got 12 minutes left. 12 minutes left. Beauty. Beauty, eh? Um, what's next? Oh, the engine blocks. We'll do the engine blocks next. And the engines themselves. tips Just because the little drive motor or whatever the hell it is. That's it. Right? Yeah, that's it. And that flyer's done. Oh, I didn't do the intakes. <laughs> Forgot to do the intakes. Forgot to do the intakes. 
Ghost Starman Deluxe, are you planning to paint the bases or leave them plain? Have you uh, have seen some very cool paint jobs, but it seems like a pain. Uh, the plain bases are way better for seeing the details. Uh, well, I have no plans on doing the bases uh, because you know, I don't know. They, it's not entirely necessary because th these bases are more function than they are aesthetic, right? Uh, because they indicate obviously you know direction they have obviously dials on them and when you start painting things right you got to get in there and you know what I mean like you know you gotta, you gotta protect things and you know so I don't know it's not something that I feel is necessary but I may it might be fun to kind of uh, you know uh, do like a shade on you know that base I don't know, it's, you know, again, the base is just more function than it is, you know, aesthetic, right? I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Alright, what was I doing? Damn, I forget. Oh, right, the intakes. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that, you knew that, but did they know that? the intakes look a little bit more manageable they look a little glossy right now because obviously because they're wet but once it dries it contrast finishes more with a matte finish so it'll be fine Those intakes are done, so now it's just the, um, the canopy. The canopy is next. That's it. Sweet. What time are we at here? Six minutes. We can do this in six minutes. <laughs> Ghost Starman looks, if I get any of these, I'll probably paint them up. Not likely to play Aeronautica, to be honest. No? You don't want to play it? Um, it's like X-Wing. Like, looking at the rules and, you know what I mean, and... Now, I have only ever played, I think, one or two games of X-Wing, so I'm not, I can't, you know, all the nuance of the game, but... <coughs> yeah, the, the feeling of Aeronautica is similar to X-Wing. We're grabbing a little bit of Warpstone glue. Let's slap this onto the pellet. And very quickly here, we are going to lay this into the canopy. It's too much. There we go. There we go.
Hmm. Doesn't look the same on this one. Maybe I have a little too much water in my brush. Oh, a nice bold green there. All right. That's it for that. I'm gonna grab some moot green. Some moot green. It's the little dollop. That's all we need. Oh, I just licked my brush. Ah, oh, son of a. How long did I go? I went like a couple, like an, an hour and some without licking my brush. Uh, it's because I'm moving, I'm trying to move quickly here and I'm not thinking. And I'm just putting this little highlight right along the bottom edge of the canopy. Just like so. Just like that. Just gives a little impression of depth. That's it. That's all that is for. Nothing fancy fancy schmancy yeah there we go that's it that's the canopies that's it the planes are done they're ready for battle uh you know what let's take them off their stands here for a moment while i check the comments here go starman deluxe it's not so much that I'm not interested in playing it, just that me and my boys tend to stick pretty rigidly to 40k, except D&D, I suppose. Well then, can you rigidly stick to something if you occasionally play something? I think that doesn't jive, right? So I would say you're not that rigid on the 40k. It's just the painter's tape taken off right now. Badoom. Then really quickly here, pull up the stem. Find the end where I tack this over. Right there. But I mean, like, you know, if you like the models, then buy it, you know? I mean, like, just because the models are for a game doesn't mean you have to play the game. You can just buy the models just because you like the look of them, you know? Or, you know, whatever. <coughs> Maybe, just maybe, you're going to use them for a diorama. Maybe you want these models because you're planning on a diorama and you want little models in the shot to look like things far away kind of thing, right? I've seen that one done. I can't remember if it was with Epic or if it was Aeronautica, but I remember seeing that with some, you know, flyers and giving that impression of, of depth, you know, distance. Go Starman. Yeah, most stuff I get is just for the enjoyment of putting together. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, people who collect, you know, scale modeling. I mean, like, you know, they buy the Sherman tanks and stuff like that. Like, they're not looking to play with them. They're looking to, you know, once they're done them, they put them on the shelf and, 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 you know, enjoy it in that regards. I mean, like, you know, everything we buy doesn't have to be, you know, for some sort of purpose i mean you know like i'm just because i just play the game you know and it's like nah, no you can just enjoy it you know and there's no rule says you can't uh, you know just sit there and enjoy your model you know you put the time and you know love into the model and and look what i did what did i do oh for the love of pete um where's the end I think that's the end. There it is. Somehow I messed that up. Somehow. Some way. Some form. There we go. Slap that in. Boom. Put the plane back on the base. Boom. I heard a crack. What the hell was that crack? <laughs> I heard a crack. I didn't like that. No, it was just the way I was holding it. And there! Squadron of a barracuda done ready to go and for all of you that uh, follow my work on youtube and such um yeah you'll expect a battle report soon enough with these things uh, 
I'll be playing against my boy. He's excited to play. I don't know which faction he wants to play. If he wants to play Imperial, if he wants to play Tau, I'm not 100% sure. So we'll find out. Either way, that'll be it. It's two minutes after two. I think we're done for the day. We got uh, we got we got most of our project done today, actually. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, ch chatting, you know, asking questions and posting comments and what have you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I stream this live typically every Friday, usually at 12 p.m., but I usually leave that wide open to, you know, possibly, you know, other times of the day because sometimes I get busy and, you know, other things get in the way. So, but I usually try and stream this Fridays. Uh, we've been pretty consistent. This is what, episode 26? And uh, that means that we've been going for 26 weeks on this um, project and filming this and, you know, doing this on Twitch. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this stuff. Uh, and uh, let me know, um, you know, what other kind of projects should I be working on? I mean, I know I this Man, I got like a bazillion projects. I got a bunch of my Eldar. Um, I've got my Deepkin. I've got... Um, oh, I've got the Enforcers from Necromunda to start working on. Uh, I got my Ambles to get finished. Maybe I'll... Maybe next week. Yeah, maybe next week uh, we'll, we'll work on some Ambles. Or something else. And then with the new edition of 40k coming out soon, there'll be a whole new set of Marines to be working on. Necrons. I, I've been... I have a bunch of Necrons. I probably got enough Necrons to do... Uh, probably like a 2,000, maybe even possibly 3,000 points of Necrons. Uh, I really have no intention of building the army, but who knows? And I've been meaning to demonstrate something uh, for the Necrons, painting them. And so maybe with the new Necrons, maybe I'll do a, uh, a tutorial on a, just a different way of painting them. Because, yeah. Because I like doing things a little bit differently. That's, that's kind of uh, Chris's stick. You know, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of people out there painting in a very similar fashion. It's not wrong, it's not bad, but it's just everybody's kind of doing it, and you know that doesn't really interest me. In fact, if there was only one way to paint these things, that would be very boring. That'd be very very boring, and, and I probably would not do this hobby if that were the case right so but because there's a million different ways to go about this that means there's lots of infinite variety right so but it seems like a lot of times people just don't they don't use their imagination and it's an unfortunate thing <laughs> Go Star Mandelux. I just hit 10,000 of the channel point thingies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the point thingies are really for, but, you know, I mean, for custom emojis. But we don't got no custom emojis. I don't think we do. Maybe I should import some of the ones from our Discord server over here so we can use some of our um, custom emojis. Because I, I definitely should have, like, the Way of the Brush one, right? See, again, it's all these things I got to get up on, on, on the Twitch. And the thing is, is I, I stream, what, three times a week on Twitch? So I probably should get more on board with, you know, the Twitch universe of, of uh, the Twitch environment. And that's just me being a bad streamer. Bad. Bad Chris. <laughs> Ghost of Starman. Necrons in like a bajillion different metallics. Ooh. Ooh, a rainbow metallic Necron army. Rainbow. Like on one Necron. He's just full on every color. Or... Has anybody done this, actually? I want to say somebody has done this, but do a quick Google search right now. Necron, heat treated or heat tempered. You know the, like, you know the gun barrel effect on, on, you know, on guns, right? And they do the, you know, the multicoloring going from blue to magentas to gold kind of thing. Has anybody done that on a Necron? Or in a similar fashion where maybe they've been fully heated and then they have that kind of swirling you know, color patterning running through them. That's an interesting, that's an interesting color scheme. I don't know if that's been done. I want to say it's been done, but I don't know if it's been done. Um, start, 
start start googling it let me know if you if you find out send it to chris at wayofthebrush.com and let me know all right i'm getting the hell out of here uh i'm gonna go eat lunch and um yeah, like you guys don't really need to know what i'm doing here <laughs> should just do like a live stream just have a bunch of cameras in my house uh, just like you know you guys can watch my day-to-day -day routine and you know yeah no that's that would be a terrible video that'd be terrible that'd be terrible why would anybody want to do that? I don't know. Even going for like a 24-hour stream? Pfft, no thanks. No spank you. No spank you. Alrighty. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I will see you guys next week. Uh, I don't think we'll be working on the towel. We'll probably be working on something else. What? I have no idea. Like I said, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to work on. So I am not short on projects or videos or tutorials. Man, I can just keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Especially with new, new uh, 40K coming out. <sighs> Man. I just want new Eldar. Like, is that so hard? GW, is that so hard? Just to give me new Eldar? Excuse me, Eldari. <laughs> Alrighty. Go enjoy the rest of your Friday. I will see you guys on Saturday for Way of the Brush. Uh, until then, um, Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. And just, you know, be be good to each other. Dun 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 Greenleaf terrain. Do you want fry truck fries? Do I want fry truck fries? Do I want fry fry truck No, I I don't want fry truck fries. I try not to eat that kind of stuff. It's not good for you. And I got a condition. I'm diabetes. I am diabetes. <laughs> uh, dun, 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 dun.